In this video, I'm going to look at the Wolverine Movie Maker Pro. This is a frame by frame, 8mm and Super 8 film to digital scanner, and they claim it has the highest quality available. Well, we'll see about that. We're going to check this one out. I picked one up for my uh, conversion operation. Let's look at it. So this is the Movie Maker Pro by Wolverine Digital. And what this device does is it is used to transfer the old home movies that were done on 8mm and Super 8 over to video. And what they're promising is they're promising that this thing is going to deliver better quality than what I was getting out of my old professional uh, film chain that I've been using for years. And it, it should do a, a really good job because it's going to scan each individual frame of film. And basically how this thing works is it's it's got a camera in here that if we look at it here, there's a camera right up in the top here. And it, it's going to expose each frame of film one frame at a time. So there's no longer a need to project. There's no longer a need for light boxes. There's no longer a need for telecine type. And there's no more film gate. It's just going to pull the film through at a constant rate and scan each frame as it goes past this camera so um have you ever used one of these things before so let's go through the setup and then we're going to take a look at the actual quality this is actually a film that i transferred many many years ago with my father-in-law's film you can find it on youtube called mr gullible has a toothache and uh, it's a sound film which this machine does not do sound so what i'm going to do is i'm going to scan this film again with this unit and i'm going to take the soundtrack from the original recording that was done again it, I transferred it probably I'm gonna say 30 years ago now more than likely and it was it was transferred to VHS in the past and I used the sound projector and just shot it off the screen so that's probably the worst way you can transfer because the, the particular film projector I had to use, I had to use a sound projector and I, I used my father-in-law's old Kodak sound projector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rescan this film onto, it, it encodes right onto an SD card and I'm going to take the output from this and I'm going to take the audio from the original film and try to sync them up so that they're the same and we'll see how this looks and I'll publish the uh, the result. Anyway, let's uh, set this thing up. Now, now, I purchased this machine for my video conversion and transfer business. So, uh, any of you guys watching this, if you've got any 8mm films or movies that you want to transfer over, I can certainly do that for you. And uh, I'll be advertising this on my my uh, on my webpage, my personal webpage and stuff, and putting it in the in the paper and stuff. I've done tra film transfers for many, many years. And it's slowed down over the last couple of years, but now that uh, we've moved into the high definition era, this is uh, saying it will output at 1080p. And in the past, I've been able to output at 1080i, again, um, and 480p or 480i. This is going to, I think, deliver a much, a much better quality than what I'm used to seeing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load the reel of film. Now, depending on the size of the film reel, if you're using Super 8, you have to use these adapters, which adapt the film uh, reel to fit. 8mm, we don't use them. So if you lose those, you're also kind of screwed. I much prefer the, the type of uh, reels that actually have a hub that can slide back and forth, but... Uh, and this also doesn't rewind, so to rewind it, you actually have to take the film off and push it the other way, put it right through the other way, and do it the other way, do it manually. But anyway, to load this thing up, well, I guess the first thing I need to do is I need to change the mode from Super 8 to 8mm. Okay, so that's how you select the film. So let's get out of here. So this is, this is how you select this. 8mm or Super 8. So we're going to select 8mm. I'm not even reading the manual. To load the film, you open the gate and you take the film and just follow the path. We need to make sure that the film, see this is a sound film, so the sound was actually added after the fact. We need to make sure that the film goes under these two white tabs at the back. If we don't, it's not going to project or play properly. 
That's the hardest part, getting the film under the two tabs. There's one. And the other over here. Okay, now that we've got the film under the tabs, we can close down the gate. Of course, you want to uh, actually cue the film up to the first actual frame and not do the leader. That is, unless you want the leader to record onto your, your file. The tape or the film loading path and up onto the reel. And I take it I have to uh, give myself some slack. If I don't give myself some slack, I won't be able to pull the film. So, I'll give myself some slack. <laughs> Let me try a different take-up spool. Ah, this is... Uh... Of course, fail number one is that this unit comes with a 200-foot take-up reel. Not a big one. You know, you buy the deluxe projector, or the deluxe unit, because it can support up to the 9-inch reels, and then they give you a 5-inch take-up reel with it. There, okay. there we go. Okay, to uh, start this thing, I think I'm going to probably want to advance this. Well, let's just see. Let's just start it up here. Push lever to the right. Yeah, okay. If I press the please wait. And there's how it works. As you can see, it does one frame at a time. Until it sticks on the splice and then it doesn't move. That's a fail already. Okay, I've re queued the film to the start and um, we're gonna press the start button. I guess we have, uh, there's probably some adjustments that can be made here. As you can see, there's, there, there's the camera there, so keep your fingers out of here when it's scanning. But to, to just to scan it, we just uh, select the film type and then press the enter key and it should start scanning one frame at a time and uh, this thing looks like it's gonna take a while because it's doing about two frames per second so at two frames per second this is gonna take a while but we'll see how the quality looks when this thing's done. Now you can see how slow this thing is. It's only scanning two frames per second and eight millimeter film was shot typically at 16 or 18 frames per second. So one of those little 50 foot reels that would normally run around three minutes is going to take about 30 minutes to run through this machine. So this is something that's gonna take a very long time to do it. Now this film that I'm scanning here is just over 200 feet long. As you can see the film moving through the uh, exposure table there. It's going to take almost three hours to do this. What's going to be interesting to see is how long it actually takes to scan this entire film. Because um, it's pretty slow. Hence why we have to charge what we have to charge to transfer film. So this is not going to be a cheap way of doing it, but in terms of the quality, this should deliver the best possible quality. And that's what we're after is getting the best quality. So I'm just gonna let this thing just do its job here and I'll check in on it from time to time as the night goes on because this is probably gonna take all night to do this one roll film. Okay, so first impression right now is um, if there are any, if there's any damage to the film, the sprockets it's going to stick and it's going to just sit there and record the same frame over and over and over until you clear the jam so uh, that part right there could uh, pose a problem for transferring films it's going to be a have to, you have to babysit the machine basically it's what's going to have to happen which I, I wasn't thinking about that but now that I've seen it do it uh, I've already had a clear one jam on this. If it does it again at the next splice, I'll, I'll show you what it does. But uh, that right there is could be an issue with using one of these machines. But the quality of it looks to be very good. 
it's actually a video out on here. I should be able to take that into my monitor and see what it looks like on the big screen. So if you don't want to work off of the small monitor that's built in, it does have a video out that you can plug into a standard NTSC monitor and it will send the display contents to an external monitor. But probably not advisable to do this on a plasma or an OLED set because it does have the on-screen data and it uh, likely will burn in if you leave it for any length of time. But that gives you an idea of what the quality looks like. It's actually looking pretty good. This film was done back in the, you know, about 1960. And I, I haven't seen, I've never seen it look this bright. I'm looking forward to looking at the resulting file once it finishes the transfer. But in this case, I'm going to have to take this onto my computer and uh, sync it up a bit and fix some of the screw-ups because it has jammed a couple times while it's been uh, going through a splice. It's jammed, so I'm going to have to go and fix that part. Well, this thing's been going now for about an hour, and I'm not even halfway through this film. Although the quality is looking pretty good, even on my old plasma set here. The quality is looking pretty damn good. But we'll, we'll cut some of this in once it's done to show you guys how good the quality looks on this thing. And again, I've done no setup on this. You see, I'm not making any exposure compensation or anything. I just loaded the film and hit go. Well, you can see the time now. It's uh, been going now for a good hour and a half. Still probably another hour to go to do this film, which is only, what, 300 feet? Very, very slow, but uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that the quality will be worth the wait. Now, as you can see from the time, uh, it's been over two and a half hours, and this real roll of film is just over 200 feet. So about an hour for 100 feet. That means a 400 foot roll of film is gonna take four, four plus hours to, to scan. So uh, now you get an idea as to why the establishments that are using this, including myself, are gonna to have to charge what our time is worth to do it. So now we're kind of coming up on the end of the film. As I say, this is a sound film, and of course, these units won't do sound. So to do sound, you'd have to scan the image. Okay, I'm going to stop it now. And there we go. It stopped. Uh, in order to uh, in order to do a sound film, you're going to have to. Do the picture once, and then rewind the film and play it through a sound projector, and record the audio through a sound projector, and then take the video file that's created by this unit, and take the audio file that's created from the sound portion from a sound projector, and merge the two of them in a computer. That's going to be a lot of work. To do a sound film, it's going to be very pricey. Anyway, this is done. So once it's done, you have to rewind the film. And of course, this thing has no way of rewinding. So you have to open it, remove the film, take the spools off. Wonderful. And of course, the adapters come off here. This is my own reel. And reverse the spools. Close down the gate, because the gate has to be closed, otherwise uh, the film can be damaged. And then we're going to turn the machine on, and we hit the menu key, I think it's menu, yeah, and then we go down to where it says rewind, it's, it normally would show up here, but I've got it showing up on that one, rewind, and then I press enter, and it says, yeah, yeah go. And it's going to rewind at that speed. Somehow I think I'm going to grow old waiting for this film to rewind at that speed. Oh boy, I tell you. For what this thing costs, you would expect that it would be faster than what it is. And this is not cheap. This, this, this is $400, this machine. 
Uh, by the time I got the thing delivered to me, by the time I had to pay tax on it to bring it across the border, uh, you know, I'm over $500 um, to, to buy this machine. So uh, it better, it certainly better deliver results that are going to knock my socks off because uh, this is a lot of work. And I bought this as a commercial venture because I do do, uh, I still do film to video transfers. And I wanted to be able to up my game a bit over what I was getting out of my old equipment, which was, you know, 30 years old. I had very good equipment at the time, but it was 30 years old. And 30-year-old machine is uh, limited by in terms of its, its quality because it's an optical system. Whereas this is a single-frame scanner. So the, the results on this should be superior to what I was getting off the other one. But man, it's slow. Now one thing you do need to do is you do need to frame the film and you do get dust on there by the way uh, so you have to keep that gate but you, you do have to frame the film and I'm just going to show you how to do that because I, I couldn't do it at the beginning of the film just because um, uh, there was t credits and stuff on here but if you need to adjust the framing you put the film in slide it under the two gates here which is part of the, the battle and close it, close the gate, and you need to be able to adjust your framing. So, to adjust the framing, you press. Where is it here? Frame adjust. Okay, and it'll it'll queue up a frame, and then you have to adjust your up and down, your left and right, right. You have to adjust the the actual frame, left and right, and then I guess it's uh, press the enter key, and then move to the next one. This is your up and down frame. So you have to adjust your framing, but you have to do this before it starts, right? Because here you can see the bottom of the next frame coming into the image. Right, so you adjust your X and your Y. And then your zoom which is the next one down. So if you're zoomed in too much, you'll miss the edge of the frame. So you can adjust your framing, right? But keep in mind, if you zoom out too much, you're going to see the white edge around the film. So you want to adjust your zooming so that you're not seeing any of the frame above or below. But you have to adjust this prior to threading it up, or you can use the default. The defaults seem to be pretty close. And then um, once you've done that, again, you're back to the X adjust. So that's left and right. And the Y adjust. And then the width. Back to menu. If you need to adjust the exposure menu, if you need to adjust the exposure adjust, you can go down up to two f-stops or up up to two f-stops and same with your sharpness low medium or high anyway that's that's how you do that but again you got to set that up before you actually start your capture because once you've started your capture then uh, you're not going to be able to do it now this is so blatantly slow on rewind, and unfortunately the reel is locked. I was thinking it might be, it might be faster just to put the re, just to rewind the thing by hand rather than use this slow slow motor because I tell you this thing is just ridiculous. It'd be faster to do it like this, okay? Hold the spool on there and let it freewheel. It'd be faster to rewind your film like this than waiting for that slow motor because <laughs> I tell you it'll take a month of Sundays to rewind a film that way unbelievable for the amount of money that they're charging for this thing you would at least thought that they would have put 
a half decent rewind on it. Anyway, um, I've scanned this film. I'm anxious to see how it's going to look. So I'm going to go take the film out of here, or take the SD card, which is just stored in the back here. I don't think I'm going to be using this reel going forward. I'll use a different reel. But uh, SD card's in the back. We just pop out the SD card and we're ready to put it in the computer and see what the quality looks like. So this is the quality right off of the film. This is the untouched file. As you can see, the actual quality of the image is very good. And you can see the grain in the film. Now, remember, this film was done about 1960, I think, somewhere around there, before I was born. And, um, well, as you can see, um, it looks very good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show a little clip coming up here. And I'm going to actually punch the sound in from when I combined the sound from the VHS tape of of the actual film and you can see the film that was done with my optical system that I did I, I, I did it probably 25 30 years ago onto VHS using a, a high-end camera and a projector pointed at a screen you'll see those shots I'm going to show it coming up here there was a small section of film that when I did when I put it together right where, where a splice went through and it kind of jammed and it blurred it so i i cut over to a, a quick shot from the vhs which you'll see coming right up so you can compare it so this is where the film jammed the first time but let's take a look at uh, what i actually uh, was able to put together so here's the same segment with the sound that was taken off of the vhs copy and at that point where the film jammed i had to i just cut into a, a bit from the original copy from VHS so you'll see the difference in the quality so this is right off of the original film with the sound of course added after the fact now right here it's kind of a bit blown out there is a there's the shot that was done off of VHS copied off VHS you can see how much darker it is What's the matter? it's not bad this was done with my professional uh, um, transfer chain which I've been using for years and and then I got the film fixed and cut back in and here's back to the high definition from the new Wolverine scanner now I haven't done any exposure compensation I think maybe my exposure is a little bit hot and if I drop it down about an f-stop it might not blow out quite as much as this but I'll be I'll be playing around with this uh, going forward this is just the first time I've transferred a film and I wanted to see how it would work so I've got an idea how it looks here uh, we'll be working on this uh, see if I can get it looking a little bit better but anyway that's the first look at the Wolverine movie maker pro when I woke up, it was gone. and uh, as you can see I I spent a bit of time syncing the audio but I didn't do any color correction or anything this film has actually degraded that's why the color is kind of gone a bit green uh, compared to when it was done 25 years ago the film itself is actually deteriorating and that's what happens with these old 8 millimeter films the old Kodak films the dyes are starting to, to fade on them so that's part of the reason is this film is not really in the best shape because it's been sitting around for you know 60 odd years and that Thank sign you, hanging up there that's that ham starry night sign that I restored Oh, see, I've got an awful yeah. toothache. Can you help me out? Oh, I don't know. I'm not in that profession no more, but come out to my apartment and we'll see what we can do. 